Hey everyone, I'm Tassinix, and welcome to Plotting and Scheming. This is covering Season 50, 3 vs. 3 Grand Arena Championship, uh, Week 3 for Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. I am joined, as is usual, by my three co-hosts, Dagger, TJ, and Sasha Isha. Gentlemen, how you doing today? Doing great, Tass. Could be better, but it's fine. Awesome week, awesome week, 3-0, and baby. Oh, wow. Wow, y'all are crushing yeah, I went one and two. Uh, the last one was just a robbery. We'll cover it when we get there. But uh, uh. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, let's get into it. Let's get right into it. Uh, what worked this week, guys? Uh, Dagger, you didn't play much this week, so we'll just use you as the springboard for most of this. Let's hear what you got. Uh. What worked? What needed to come through and came through? Like everything I tried. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, all, 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 all joking aside, like, uh, I played two rounds, and my second round opponent, the first time I played, my opponent said no GLs. And then my third round opponent, I ended up finishing with Starkiller and Slacker on the bench. Because mm. he said, like, one GL. Jeez. Okay. So, well. He, he, that, actually, that was, my, that was my week. So, I played only, like you said, I only played two out of my three rounds. I went two and one. And... I guess, oh, both times I'm in fleet, I fought the March 6th start. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I guess the one thing I'll give you, I guess, is, yeah, I mean, so to the surprise of no one in this chat, at least, uh, you know, Kamara got it done. Mm, okay. And yeah. it was like 72 both times. It was really good banners. Mm, all right. All right. Because, you know, March 6th doesn't do any damage. You're right. Okay. But, yeah, that's all I got. Uh Nothing really notable outside of, uh, I guess, Bounty Hunters. I worked versus, uh, one of my opponents split his Tuscan, so Bounty Hunters worked versus uh, a Rurur Shaman wow. Raider. Been a like, month like, of Sundays yeah. since I've seen that. that yeah, you get what I'm saying. Like, that's like the only like notable fight I can think of. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, makes sense. Yeah. All right, all right. Well, TJ, how about you? What worked this week? What came through? Dude, a lot of good come throughs. Um, I'm gonna call it again, uh, as it's understood. Um, Trey worked on BKM for my round three. Um, all you have to do is just have some luck, and it works. <laughs> and it's it's like, if you're poor or unlucky, just don't be that. It's it's like the That's easiest right. answer, and yeah. and it gives you a 57. It's so been. wild. That's right. Yeah, yeah, right. You just be luckier than the other side, and then you know you win. Um, when, it, yes, it when, it, when it works, it's a 57. When it works, it's a 57. And when right. it doesn't work, you suck. Do better next you time. You suck. It's just your fault, right? Mm -hmm. It's 100% yeah. your fault. It's not RNG or anything else. You That's just right. need to stop it. Just don't be a pleb. And I'm sorry, what was uh, that you were saying there, Sasha? saying is don't be a TJ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But or, or be a TJ because it's better than a dagger. Because you want to be the long sword, not the baby sword. Ooh. Ooh. This is Size matters, baby. Little, little, right, so, so, little, so little test the only reason the only reason you believe size matters is because your penis is big. Okay, that's the only reason you Look, believe size matters. We don't argue with math or facts. That's right. It's all about opinions. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I gotta hear you. Okay, so all right, so the other thing that worked good. Uh, nice sisters are actually having a good week for me. So uh, I started playing around with other nice sister comps. Um, these dash hondos and everything like that. It's weird when Hondo doesn't get his 20 stacks, he goes away. So it's an easy yeah. kill for 57. So the um, Nice Sisters were doing good work there for me. Nice. Um, Qui-Gon Jinn did work for me. We're also going to say Qui-Gon Jinn did not work for me for uh, when we saw Saw Chase. Mm -hmm. So that was a good one. Um, other things that worked. Uh, thanks to Tass and watching it live, JML felt very good on DTMG. Yeah, props uh, props to uh, Trouble on Demand for dropping the hot note on that. In a YouTube I'm not comment. gonna uh, I'm not gonna dispute where it came from, but uh, getting to see you do it um, and then understanding that, so be able to actually add it to it and do it for myself, mm -hmm. felt very good. So that was a very clean one. That there felt great. Uh, not to steal your thunder. Um, no, that was well, one of them, but that's no, okay. I mean, as long as it gets covered, that's you, you're right to take it no, because I'm that was a good you, one. I, I'm with you, TJ. I usually wait for Tess to do it because he can do it anyway. That's right. That's the answer. Is like you can see it, and he screws it up. It's like, was it him or was it the fight? Right, and we know how that works out. Um, other things that worked. It that's uh, Wampa was doing good things for me until my round three, where I'll cover it didn't work um, against Aiden. So this whole uh, that whole piece was was great, um, getting me 58 where I needed him to work. Mm -hmm. And 
I think, oh, Jawas. I was having so much fun with Jawas. Um, two out of the, the three times, uh, I needed a Fin Fin Zori killer because they either didn't set Star Killer or I was putting something else out, and Jawas were beating that up just all up inside them guts. That was a fun <laughs> one. Um, yeah. Everything else was fine. Uh, also, if you're going to set Darth Revan, I don't think they, people understand. If you're not going to set Doubt on it, you're, it's going to get troopered. So, shocking enough, troopers worked on a, a standard Darth Revan team without Doubt. So I weird. believe it. I yeah. believe it. Um, and then, of course, Jawa's on Star Killer was still doing his thing. Uh, the yeah. other one I'll tell you that would have caught me by surprise, but thankfully I did my homework. Uh, JMK on uh, SLK, Crew, and Malakos. Mm-hmm. Uh, man, yeah. was that clean. Uh, super easy fight. Uh, that that one felt really good. So nice. Yeah, it was a good week, man. All right. All right, well, Sasha, let's hear from you. What was good to you this week? Yeah, this was, this was a really fun week. Uh, three great matches. I uh, had UTAS uh, in the first round. Uh, DK in the second round, who, um, for those of you that, you know, a.k.a. Weevil, but DK right, is a... Um, like a, like a mad scientist, like gap defense genius is my experience. Just the most brutal stuff. Uh, so that was a great match. Uh, neither of us cleared, but I, I got the win. And then I uh, played Michael in the, the third round. Mike from the, AKA Mike from the North, a, a friend of former yeah. mate who's uh, awesome and one of the best offensive players uh, in, in the game, in, in my humble opinion. And I lost on that in banners. He played awesome. So a bunch of good learnings there. Um, so the good offense stuff, stuff that worked for me. Um, so Malgus versus DTMG, you know, I, I mentioned that last week. That was just like clockwork, reliable go-to for me with quite a few 57s, actually, just because of the prop regen involved there. Um, Bam Tuskins, I talked about that last week. And I do think I watched your battle with one of them, Tass, and, and you made it work. But you took one that did not have the level three with the sort of Amplify Agony equivalent, that 2% max health damage, just to get more damage in staff birds. Yeah. Having one with that became very comfortable. Mm. Um, so I think I got you know, anywhere between 54 to 57, but felt in control there. Uh, some of the more interesting ones uh, for me, though, so, uh, in, I think it was, yeah, it was my match with uh, DK, who again, just had a brutal, like, there was no way I was going to full clear. Um, and I, I can get into that a little bit, but like uh, I was trying to come up with creative options to sort of nibble around the edges and take out what I could. And he had a, uh, a, a triple army uh, Akbar princess Leia and Krex. Uh, yeah. Granted Krex's uh, army is only partially active with that combo, but he had that on D and the, what worked for me. And it's just fun. It's kind of old school was a like Padme old school galactic Republic it was Padme mace mm-hmm. and shock. Mm. And uh, obviously Akbar Leia wreck. There's a ton of out of turn attacks there, uh, which, you know, under Padme's lead generates a decent amount of protection up. Um, and, but you have high survivability, uh, you kind of are whittling them down as Mace, uh, is, is able to use shatter. Plus you're occasionally getting enough stack to get courage. It was, uh, ultimately it was a one shot for, with 56 banners. Um, wow, and, uh, that, yeah, that was, that was fun. Cause it was another squad I kind of looked at and I'm like, Jesus, they could just turn me to train me out of the building here. Um, another really like fun puzzle to try and crack versus DK so uh, his back walls, his front walls were really rough, but his back wall was five GLs and in creative, like, throw the kitchen sink at me. So here's an example. Uh, I faced a squad that was Malgus lead, Lord Vader, and Darth Revan. And I'm like, I, I don't know. I mean, needless to say, dot .gg was not particularly helpful. It's never <laughs> been um, And uh, what shocked me, uh, pun not intended, but uh, I got a one shot using Basti lead, Jedi Knight Cal, and Jedi Knight Luke. There was just enough survivability, and then you can snipe out Malgus, you take DR out, and LV ults so slowly out of the right. lead that those three were able to, I think I got like a 56 on that. Um, Beautiful. So nice. that was a fun discovery. Um, I had, uh, I'll circle back to this on what didn't work in just a bit, but some interesting experience uh, with uh, uh, Jabba working uh, on, on Ray for me, and it was against a Ray with like 75% deflection. And um, my concern was, well, 
using the Bouchcron, am, am I going to run into an issue um, because I'm not able to get crits to take Inspired off because Leia's special damage is going to you know miss all the time. It was reading enough of Jabba's kit, and you guys may have known this already, but as I got deeper into it, there's sufficient mastery stacking combined with the fact that special accuracy is a mastery stat for Bouch that like over time, and particularly once you trigger contract, even at like 70 plus percent deflection, she's landing everything. Her accuracy exceeds 70 percent. So that worked. And that was a good learning for me. And then um, the last thing I would say is just uh, touching on what TJ did, just a slightly different vein of it is like Jawas. It's fun kind of trying to find where you could use them. And against DK, who had this brutal defense for me, I threw Jawas out against um, a good like Bam Han Tui squad that uh, like otherwise I was just afraid to kind of, you know, certainly eat banners, maybe take out what I put out there. But it was like a 57. Um, Maybe I got lucky with when, when things detonated, but that worked. Very nice. Anything else you wanted to highlight? No, no. That, that, that's okay. a lot. Sorry, you guys. Yeah, Go no, for it. no, it was a lot, but it was good notes. I mean, yeah, you guys already covered some of the, the favorites, but I'll, I'll just hit the highlights for myself. Uh, against the Tuscans. So, yeah, you already mentioned the time. Uh, so I've done it twice this week. The first time was... Uh, using the offense stacking level six but prod up level three and yeah sasha gave that advice there in the chat for for that stream that you know the excuse me the max health damage on three is the way to go there i did do that this last round um so just just to recapture that first fight i had to use birds three separate times and hatch it down you know warrior then the original raider then, you know, basic my way through the summoned raider a couple times till he was gone. And then uh, I was able to smack you know, the chieftain out with like one second, less than a second on the clock. Like I was basically yeah. timing out. This second time I went in with what Sasha said with the level three. Um, I got up to 14 birds. I let loose on the warrior and the whole team fell over. So exactly as advertised, you were, you were right about that, Sasha. Whole team just well, came it, right it props over. to Arsenal. Arsenal's the one I got that from, hey, so, yeah. but yeah, I'm glad it worked. Yeah, Arsenal's got some good ideas. All right, uh, Maljar sure. ISC, it's actually one of the only times I've seen it the entire season. You guys are talking about applications for uh, Jawas. That did it just fine, 57 banners. Um, Saw Chair at Bays. So this week I did more of like the Afra BT1. That isn't uh, revolutionary for others, but I hadn't done it myself, so I was pleased to see that it worked every time, like 55 or 56. Um, let's see here. DTMG Scout Gideon. Yeah, uh, yeah. I know that TJ covered it. I did do it twice this week. Both successful, 55 and 56, respectively. Um, let's see here. Store, uh, no, that's not even worth covering. Gar Rex and fi uh, Gas Rex 5s, guys. Man, I'll tell you what. Um... Gar ISC was just the bane of pretty much anybody's Gas Rex 5s this week. I was after it. Uh, you set the potency on me, I checked, and then I checked and saw if I had enough tenacity with the tenacity cron and against your potency cron, and I was able to get away with it this week. Pretty pretty universally. So Gar ISC was just awesome for me. Uh, I haven't. I looked up and saw that Seer Malico's crew should be a sure thing against Reva because I was needing options for Reva. That was 56, Seer Malico's crew. Um, you just go after GI first, then 7th, take care of Reva last. Uh, that was just fantastic. Um, Brilliant Randy sold me on a ridiculous idea. It was a silly idea. It was, a, it was a, an improbable idea. But Malgus nonetheless did solo Finn Zori Resistance Hero Finn for 58. And it took a while to saw through, let me tell you. Um... But it, the fight ultimately did finish with about two minutes on the clock. So it was like, gosh, we're not making a lot of progress. Gosh, we're kind of stalling out. And then somebody keeled over. And then the next person keeled over. And then the fight was over. It was like that. Um, let's see. Aside from that, that, that covers that part of the round. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Yes, I did have Trey and Isla Savage work for me once against a BKM Paz Grogu. And I really needed that. Uh, otherwise, the fight was going to get real real short after that. Um, pleased to report that Sorty GG Droidica uh, still falls to Bad Batch. 
Hunter Echo and Wrecker did it. It was a little rougher than I would have liked. I, I I saw that the win rate was lower with tech, but I wonder. Because I know historically I've done pretty well with tech. You just use the potency level t uh, from set 12 and you just keep them locked down. Um, didn't do that this time, but it did get done. Yes, Heracrex. Man, Heracrex Sabine, Heracrex uh, Kanan. Those are the only variations I fought this season. Chirpa, Wicket, and Nisa was, again, like 57 banners. Um, yeah, I don't think I did anything too unconventional in Fleet that worked anyway. So that's a, that'll be it for me. All right, guys. Segment two. What didn't work? We, once again, start with Dagger. What failed you? What left you for dead? You there, uh, neighbor? Yeah. All right. Uh, let's just... So, I, I... I've been a little foggy all week for... Uh, anyways. But, yeah, like, for some reason, I had it in my head that uh, Profundity versus Negotiator with uh, Marauder Start was a good idea. And uh, let's just say I have the little ghost that could... Or the little, yeah, the little ghost that could... Because let me tell you, that ship just 1v3 the last three ships after all. That was the only one left. I lost everybody else. Wow. Lost everybody else. Uh, now, limped out of that one with like a 61. I don't know how many of y'all have ever won a fleet fight with a 61 first try. Wow. But I can tell rough. you, I did it. That is rough. <laughs> really? I mean, I, I don't know I, what the... I think I can count on one hand the number of times I fought that comp. Uh, I, I want to believe that I would. It would occur to me to take profundity against that. I've watched other people like I don't say struggle, but I've watched profundity like not get good banners, and man, I almost lost. Mm. And I'm not even trying to say I played it perfectly, but no, no, that's yeah. like the one fight. Like the I also had like one dumb drop because I wanted to try something. I don't remember offhand what it was, mm. but yeah, yeah. Other than that, like. Everything was pretty clean this week for me. Like I said, my 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 two round two people I played against combined set one G. So, <laughs> right, dig that. Okay, TJ, how about you? What uh, what left you for dead? Where did it all go wrong? Uh, I don't really feel like it went. You know, getting to go three and zero. Uh, <laughs> I did try some stuff, so it's like they leave me for dead. Mm, uh, Qui Gon Jinn uh, was on a mission to keep trying this out to feel where these like fail factors were, mm -hmm. uh, and I and I got to talk to you about it as we talked about it. Um, mm -hmm. Depending on what happens with Saw Speed, uh, obviously we're now at the end of the season, but depending on what happens with Saw Speed, kind of to me determines the fight because of the cooldown reduction mm -hmm. uh, or the increase that happens to you. Um, I had the situation where. Um, I killed Churret, so he's obviously an easy cleanup because that whole cron is gone. Mm -hmm. And then I had the one where the slower saw allowed me to go, which was actually, honestly, a problem. Um, then I had a full fail. Like, thankfully, I had Afra to, mm -hmm. to clear it out, and it did work, but it was like watching how bad that worked and seeing that variation is like, oh, I can see where this is a bad thing. Um, okay. JML. So somebody, round three, they set JML on defense. So I took Dash, trying to play with that. And that, as you saw, Vandor never got to go. So I couldn't get rid of the debuff because he kept getting stunned because it was JKL on the team. Mm -hmm. um, again, was able to clear it up, no problem, with, again, <laughs> Afra. Um, but Dash on the JML did not feel good. was not nice. And mm -hmm. then the other big one, Wampa. Um, I've been doing Wampa on items all week. This round three, though, had Iden, um range and um, shock, and I couldn't keep up with it. That one got me beat. Uh, I was able to clear it out, but that felt pretty gnarly. And then finally, um, solid in the history, and I decided I wanted to try it because I knew I was going to get the win for round one. Um, um, I did, it was on DTMG. I had seen where people were using Radis and then they were taking Bodhi as the third with the Bodhi Cron. Mm. Um, no, no, there's no, mm, don't, don't do that. That, mm -hmm. that was like, mm -hmm. not all mm -hmm. things are equal, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, you actually need to read in between the lines of what's going on. It's like, yeah, I see why this doesn't work. And that was yep. my fault for just assuming the data's good. Seen three attempts. No, it's not. You're dumb. Stop, knock that off, TJ. That's what that was. So that's, I'm okay with it. Um, the fail needed to happen that way. What cleaned it up, though, right, was actually Padme. That was my saving grace. 
after trying 15 battles on it. Um, Padme beat the hell out of it and cleared out who I needed to for me to get the win. And Starkiller on Ray continues to feel poopy right now with the way it is. Um, on the JTR ones, call it bad luck, call it whatever you want. Uh, did not go well. That was that was my week. Mm. All right. Yep, those, uh, those sound like a lot of the same things I've got, so I'll, yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll get there when I get there. All right, Sasha, how about you? Yeah, pretty relatable stuff there. Um, so some of the most painful failures that, uh, like TJ talked about, Qui-Gon Jinn versus uh, Beysaw Turret, um, it failed two out of the three weeks for me. Uh, and when it fails, it, it can be... In my case, it, they were complete failures. Like, uh, I it wasn't able to to have Anakin go boom, and um, so they both required like expensive like JML uh, follows on on that part at least with what I had. So that sucked. Um, it gave me a ton of respect for that turret squad. I wonder if there wasn't a better option had I taken the time to really think about. Um, how a doubt cron could have been better used there because uh, you know doubt is just such a debilitating debuff on um a turret squad inability to gain buffs like uh, but uh you know after the fact here um i failed on a jabba versus leia which should be safe and i went all in on leia i think i may have made a mistake and you try and use one of leia's uh one of uh, Boosh's specials uh against leia instead of just um trying you know sticking with basics and, and just getting to hold the sides but uh i lost very quickly my my boost there and that that was rough uh i mean job is able to get ult off but um it left a leia that was no joy to clean um i had uh another battle that was uh overall I, i'm a big fan of adrad and, and that squad in the right matchups but i had a tough item squad i think it was with it was with dk um and um, it was Iden, and I think it was Range and Thor. And I just could not get to the point once, even though I had I was alive, had, had my squad survived long enough, um, got to you know uh, a full ramp for whatever the Seraph transmission special for Adrad, but I couldn't get to the point where he had because of the doubt that was going up on my squad from. Um, from the data cron on Iden, I couldn't get hope uh, or whatever. I, I think it's hope or whatever from Spirit of the Rebellion or whatever it is that the Buffy needs to prevent yeah. um, revives. Yep. So like it kept going and I timed out and like, it was just frustrating. It was always tantalizingly close. Mm. Then um, in uh, the match against Michael, one other challenge was uh, the, uh, um, he said he had a tough back wall and included a Reva and I did not have the right things for Reva and particularly with some of the good data crons going around now uh, for Inquisitorious. Mm -hmm. uh, I failed a few times on that. I tried uh, in that one. I tried Jawas there, um, but uh, couldn't get it going. And, and after the fact, for obvious reasons, because uh, GI was getting tenacity up there. But um, the uh, what ultimately worked to help whittle them down, ironically, was a um, uh, a Darth Vader Talon uh, Malak squad that I normally have set on D at, at times, but I happen to have an offense and was able to get uh, at least the sides. But those were those were all learning for me. They were tough. All right. Well, that's great. That is great information. Uh, yep. Uh, for me, so, you know, uh, Sasha told me about BKM Paz Grogu, and that was successful for me for round two. Um, you know, they, they did some chopping, and eventually, you know, we got our chains out, and we were able to survive long enough, and they did eventually kill both of the sisters, but, uh, we got the fight done. But my last round, today's round, uh, an incredible sequence of events occurred. It was, um... Protection got stripped off of Zombie. Then Bo-Katan killed Zombie three times in a row. Then turned and killed Daka two times in a row. Then killed Zombie. Now both Night Sisters are dead. Then she hits, uh, you know, C and takes uh, some amount of his protection away. And then C got his first turn. So that's how that one went. Um... And that's where I said Trey and Isla Savage was important to saving my entire ass. 
Uh, other things that dropped. There's oh, a lot of it. Man, that was that was bad. That was bad. Uh, I will say that against the comeuppance fleet, I took a risk this week that I didn't have to take, so I would advise against it. Like, you can get something like a 77, something like that, with, like, two ships using Executrix. I actually used four er, uh, earlier in the week, or last week, I forget which now, against a, a Rattus with comeuppance. And it was, like, Executrix with um, Scythe, Gauntlet, and Palps up front, and... I want to say just uh, Defender as the reinforcement, I want to say. And that uh, that got the job done. That was very high banner, as I recall. So anyway, don't go in with two ships, though. Because uh, if it does go bad, the fight just runs away from you, and that's all. Um, let's see. Any other bad fights? Yeah, I just had, you know, I've been having blue stacks instability this week, so I really have, I, I've had to avoid streaming a couple of times. And so this round, I was fighting a Veer's Dark Piet with Iden Storm and Range, and Veer's was dead. Dark Trooper had like one stack left, the fight was going fine, and then all my buttons disappeared. Um, so nothing you can do about that. So when I logged back into the game, it was as if I had withdrawn on the fight. It wasn't preloaded. I saw some win rate uh, to try Wampa, and I did try Wampa. But at this point in the show, I didn't have uh, doubt level three. I had only a uh, damage on level th uh, percent health damage on level three, and so we didn't. You know, they had doubt on this Veer's Dark Piet team, uh, and I did not. So it didn't end up working out either. And, uh, yeah, I ended up cleaning it up regardless. But the point is, don't have your game crash on you. Um, that, that's really a big lesson. Also, I mentioned this Veer's Dark Piet because I was reminded. Um, it's not that they stomped Wampa so much as I killed Veer's, then I killed Dark Trooper, who happened to have been marked by Piet, and then Piet was like, look, I don't really care for you killing the guy that I had marked. And I had forgotten about that part, because then he looked at Wampa and then deleted Wampa. So, <laughs> should keep that in mind for next time. Okay, uh, that's enough for me on this segment. So, standout defenses here. Oh, this no. is always a fun one. Uh, Dagger, back to you. Ray. Also, I just want to say this, and I and I, I, I mean no disrespect to anyone who's bow held, uh, but F you. Mine never held. F all of you. That is all. Okay. Thank you for that. No no other no other defenses. Just Ray. Ray Swolo RJT. Uh, Ray Swolo did, did you, Cal. RJ JTR. I, I don't know if you remembered when I told you that my uh, opponents between the two of them kept 15 GLs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> very good. Very good. TJ, how about you? Standout defenses. Who saved the day? Uh, I get to be greedy on it today for a couple of different methods. Um, and I, Tass, we talked about this, and I stand by it. I feel like I have perfected the defense of what it needs to be. We're calling it the efficiency meta, right? Um there's only really two GLs. Is that what it was, Taz? Two GLs uh, on defense, but each round it does the same thing. LV, absolutely. MVP, all three rounds. All season. Putting LV in the back has been the saving grace, even to the point of having my opponents DM me to say that LV really threw me off. Mm -hmm. Um but it's what LV you know, comp? kills it. It's I do it literally is just Maul and Royal Guard, but it has the good deflection resistance um, setup, and then it's the four hundred percent, and they just mm -hmm. they can't clear it. It literally got me round two. My guy attacked it twenty seven times. Still in the <laughs> yellow right now. I'm looking at it. Still in the yellow. Cannot beat it. The combo of putting the uh, and I think what do we talk about, Tass? It's like it's really eight teams that really do this. Because the next one I'll talk about is Seer with uh, Crew and, and Malikos in the back right next to LV. Mm -hmm. That combo pack, because I have DTMG up front, I have BKM up front, um, Ray was there, uh, Saw Chase, all these B teams that everybody has to just deplete your your roster and what's left. Oh, and sorry, and Riva. 
that combo up front just depletes you so when you get to the back, you can't beat it. I didn't have – I did have my round three guy clear me. Nobody else cleared me. Uh, if they cleared my LV, they couldn't clear my Seer. So it was just pick apart your, your teams to where you can't do anything. Um, and then what you had left up the top would also throw you off because Sache is held for me. Um, Tuskins did for me. It was – and then, like, uh, even Zori in round three because you had nothing left. I had already gotten everything else out of you, so there was no way to clear anything else out. And I had everything I needed um, to clear you out. So it was just just awesome. This This week was just amazing. Well, awesome. All right. Good stuff. How about you, Sasha? What are your standouts? Uh, I'll, I'll go with a couple that were uh, maybe not not like meta uh, usual. So one that got a few holds from me, um, it actually stemmed from the, like, what am I going to do with Gast and the clones? Because, you know, Krex mm -hmm. is performing pretty well with Rekt and Fives under the Rekt lead. And I kind of I like doing that. I think you set that on me, Tass, mm -hmm. if I recall. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I'm like, yeah, that's kind of cool to say. So what do I do with gas? It's either, um, like to your earlier point path, like set him with something and, and like fully expect a, a team of Mandos to wipe him out in under a minute, mm -hmm. um, or find a new use. So I actually tried, uh, Pellerin back gas and snip. And oh, uh, cool. I thought about Pellerin back gas and GK, but I actually felt like there was enough survivability and a cleanse that will come with a uh, snips like basically every time you you know anytime gas uses an ability snips is going to assist because he also uses his own ability and then he uses his special that's built into his kit as well so and she assists on uh, every special and there's a surprising amount of survivability um you know i i made foolishly or not the investment in getting keller and back like up to r9 when he came out <laughs> and have been uh fairly desperate to find some practical use mm -hmm. and it got multiple holes so that was pretty cool i i know oh, it was I, I don't know but what, reading into what happened i suspect one of them was a wampa attempt and it doesn't surprise me wampa couldn't get it done um but then uh so that was a fun one and then uh the other one i i'd, I'd add would be um an oldie but a goodie, uh, French Dooku Watt with that Doubt Cron. It just, I think, uh, in two of the three matches this week, it, it, it got a hold. Um, it was just, um, it, it, it does surprisingly well, surprisingly well. And there are times that I miss having Watt on offense, but mm -hmm. like overall, making that your 15th defense um, with a, a special Cron, we talked about it in seasons past with high defense, but. Uh, High defense crons make it pretty challenging too, but that worked. All right, well, that's great. Wow, that's awesome. Uh, I didn't have a ton of uh, amazing defense performance myself. I had uh, one round where an opponent like one shot everything, bottom front and the and maybe a drop on the top wall, but really just couldn't eat through anything I had set in the back. So I had uh, a Riva get me a hold, Lord Vader, cheer it. Um, like Malgus, I did, so I had the gas split, gas arc echo, uh, the win rate for saw, or I'm sorry, for Gar ISC is pretty low. If you've got the, um, potency level three equipped and you've got enough potency where, you know, if you check your opponent's Gar ISC, they don't have the goods. And so I had people drop on, on that split. Uh, they wouldn't, they didn't die to Rex Crex, but if they fail to either, it's a huge, you know, dub. So we'll take mm -hmm. it. Um, other good defenses. Yeah, my, my Ray, uh, actually didn't hold, I think, all season to speak of. Let me see if there was anything else great. Nothing else that was uncommon. Yeah, I set Trench Dooku and folks mostly were getting around it okay. I had Seer Malikos get the odd hold. It wasn't like, uh, I guess the, the gas split actually getting some results on defense is probably the most unique thing about this week. But that's about it for me. Uh, all right, guys. So, you know, lessons learned. Um, when we come back here next time, we'll have set 13, but not set 12, right? This next five season is the last hurrah for set 12. So what are you guys thinking here um, heading into, or, you know, what are you, what are you thinking about uh, how this is going to affect your start for threes when we show up here next time? You know, 
Dagger, you got any thoughts on that? Yeah, I think Sith Empire is off defense. Um, mm. They're just too effective on offense as long as, like, so as long as we're in, like, I know we call it an efficiency meta, but 3v3 this season has been a one-shot meta, mm. a little bit more than an efficiency meta. I have found that I can pretty safely win rounds averaging a 55 Right, I don't need perfect banners. Um, as long as I don't drop, I'm good. And the Sith Empire ha can be one really good team or two still pretty good teams to still get you like 52 plus banners per fight. So that faction, just in of itself, I think, really helps you get just get opponent teams dead. So I think, I, I think we're going to be going back to. There might even be like a gas, like the Rex Rex fives on defense with the gas plus clones on offense because you don't care mm -hmm. as much if you get a 52 <clears throat> um if the meta holds we'll have to see what the next data cron set is but i'm just saying like in a vacuum with just this set right mm -hmm. it's very much a, if you one shot your opponent's board you feel comfortable yeah um, so that that's basically what i'm be looking for looking towards and we'll talk about it in the in-between video uh between the next fives and threes probably when probably, we yeah. are looking at the data cron <clears throat> set but should the meta stay the same, those are my plans. No, that's a, I think that's a good plan. I mean, Malgus was something that was trending off of defense towards uh, the middle and the middle latter part of the last 3v3 oh. season. So the fact that it's you know continued to, to prove to be really important um, for a number of matchups on offense, I, I'm right there with you. I'm sorry, you had something to add, though? Oh, I'll say, and presumably Cal will be back before the next 3v3, which will make it even, le even less reason to put Malgus on defense for mm. people because more people will have Cal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's fair. All right. TJ, lessons learned here from this final week of this threes. Got ideas rolling through your head when, when we show up here next time. I can't yet, and I'm going to say why. Uh, until we see the effectiveness and what the new Kron is going to be, um... I think that's going to be a big factor. I think Dagger is right. I think calling out, I was already doing it this week. And one thing you'll never hear me say is I wasn't setting Darth Revan. And even when we were talking. Mm -hmm. And that's Revan where Sasha had started the season out at. He was holding it from the get. Yeah, I, I was setting it in week one. Week two, I'd already started pulling it. Week three, 100% was gone. There was mm -hmm. just no reason to set it when um, you can't put the other tools. And because I was not playing with Riva, as Sasha alluded to, I wasn't playing with that. I wasn't playing with Riva and Dow and what could happen because it's it's so easy to go so bad. So I was taking the creme de la creme team of C, Set, and Malik. And I was mm -hmm. like preaching that because it's like anything can happen even against those teams um, where if you don't take both tanks and you go with something, you could take a weak Doubt Cron. Um, but yeah, because you're not putting any additional tools into it. As Dagger alluded to, and it's perfect, you can just two-man something. You can take pieces and move it around the board, uh, and they can be broken up, like he said. So I, I want to hold my thoughts on what threes are going to be because we saw what Doubt did, and all mm -hmm. of a sudden our die side is the monster defense, right? Mm -hmm. It just holds you in places you can't go because it, it holds it up. We don't know what this next Kron is going to do. That's what I want to see before I say it's this. So I think when we get to that in between, we'll have a lot more to say about it. <laughs> well, and and for sure, you know, when, when when we're talking about this, we know there's going to be, yeah. you know, a lot of information that'll come between now and then. So so you know, in the spirit of way that that maybe Dagger answered it, if you don't know for sure what you are doing, like proactively, what are you, what are you not doing? Any 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 uh man, I won't you won't catch me doing this again. You got any of that? All right, so not. Catch me doing this uh, is not me. I'm I'm dumb. I'll keep doing it until I get it wrong and then continue to do it. Uh, what what I will say is I I don't know when we're getting out of the efficiency meta. I just I don't know. The strongest defense I saw was two GLs. That is a scary factor. Um, does it increase when we get to threes this next mm -hmm. time? Are we going to have, obviously we'll have some other strong B teams, but B teams are just running the world right now. B well, cam and, and is an absolute nightmare. Yeah, and we've we've learned here from this season that unless the next Kron set, you know, gives you some some serious meat for defense, yeah. um, you have you have the expectation of being pretty light next season, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I it think just gets lighter. I, does, now, the question I have to ask, and I think it'll be a funny one, does it get lighter? Do Right now, it's yeah. two. 
and that was still getting people and catching off guard. And Does it one. really go down to zero GLs? Do mm-hmm. we really get to a meta where the B team is well, the pivot? Remember that Jabba and Afra are gone, so I took that into consideration too. Mm-hmm. So like Afra is not just gonna just like shit stain something. So I think I, I again not not to jump on your time here, but yeah, I, I, I don't think we're gonna see a meta where the expectation is zero on defense. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. Ray will probably be there. I, I guess we can all agree. Yeah, threes, threes I, I, I think one to two. Yeah. 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 I mean, we, I, I we know there's a number of players. Though. We know a number of players who've been successful I, I would with one or not. I get back to the setting heavy again, though. I do miss the days of, of slugging it out with like a five six GL defense and and let's let the better man win. Um, or you take the gamble and you set all your GLs and I'm gonna win. Or you're gonna win because you're gonna clear one more team than me. Those those were fun days, but right now we're just not there. Yeah. Um, well, I, I think Dagger. I, I think Dagger hit it on the head. Historically, threes has always been a, a wider board, a wider game, more, lending more toward efficiency. But efficiency and having to make sure you one shot everything because of the the small margins. Like you're seeing people drop two or three battles and still post something like a twenty 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 thirty score. Um, so yeah, it's, it's what it is more than <laughs> that was e- me. Efficient, that was literally me this season. Yeah, efficient I was gives doing us exactly the wrong that. flavor, right? When we talk about it, what it is, is it's unforgiving. It's just unforgiving. It's, uh, you, you don't get a second swing and also be able to win the day. You can clear the board, but not win the day. That kind of thing. Um, any other notes from you though on that, uh, TJ, before we move to I- I'm excited, man. I, I want to see because... This this set is really effective with what it's doing. Mm-hmm. So what we're coming to next set, dude. I'm uh, I'm just excited to see what we're gonna do. Uh, is it gonna become the light side monster, right? Yeah. Of what the, the dark side is this time, to where it's like, oh, light side's back on the menu, boys, and and we're putting these crazy comps together again because obviously super teams are here even in threes. No doubt. I think it's gonna be fun. No doubt. No doubt. All right, Sasha, you, any, uh, you, sir, any lessons learned? Anything you're going to keep in mind when, uh, when next we roll around to threes? Yeah, I, a couple things. So one that uh, is particularly relevant right now, at least as we're recording, a new con- the Conquest has relaunched, mm-hmm. um, and this is still the set 13 Datacrons. And um, I'll tell you, in threes, we're setting 15 squads. Um, doubt was just so impactful that, like, I came out of that feeling like I just can't ever have enough doubt datacrons. And granted, like TJ was saying, we don't know what the next set's going to have. I mean, there might be some really cool, shiny new toys there. Um, maybe it'll marginalize doubt. But um, for me, it just feels like, you know, continuing to push in conquest to get. I, and I, I, I can almost just be indifferent to the stats on it. It's like if it's got a level three doubt, it's probably usable for me. Like I ran out of doubt crons, I think, in every match this week. Um, and I had a lot going in. Um, yeah. So that was one thing. Then the next thing is kind of like speculating on a, like maybe natural uh, evolution uh, of the order of things. This may be more relevant in fives. But I, what I could see is like we've talked about the non-GL squads, some of the new toys that have come out um, right now, it's the Chirrut Datacron, it's DTMG. Um, those guys are maybe not fully solved, but pretty well addressed on defense. But the reality is they're still beasts. And if you pivot those to offense, and I brought you know my saw Chirrut based to offense in my first match against you, uh, fast and, and used it to one-shot LB, uh, I had thought about... Um, bringing DTMG to offense to take out uh, an opponent's Jabba, which I was really confident it would be able to do in threes. It's just I, none of my opponents uh, were good bets to set Jabba. Uh, but what I could see happening in, in threes and possibly uh, even more so in fives is maybe people feel really comfortable that they can hit, punch really high up into the food chain with those um, non-GL squads. And that liberates some GLs, like just saying, like, what well, you know, gosh, I, at this point, I don't, I can really get away with setting, you know, Kenobi, uh, you know, uh, some other stuff like in the back wall that I wouldn't otherwise do because I, I have enough firepower with off meta stuff. So mm-hmm. it's a sense of is there going to be this sort of like evolutionary flip where some of these cool new toys go over to offense 
enabling, um, you know, GLs to, to be spent on D. Just speculation. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think uh, I think TJ observed that earlier this week. I think that's something more and more of us, like, I'm probably one of the last ones getting drag kicking and screaming into the realization. But, yeah, <laughs> keeping six plus, uh, six plus GLs is, uh, it doesn't feel mandatory, but it feels overwhelmingly recommended. So, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I take your point there. Um, for myself, things that I'm taking forward. So, yeah, uh, Dagger commented about how Malgus transitioned off of defense. I think there's a strong point for that. And then, um, you know, we were talking about this before we went live here. But, yeah, Gas uh, continues to show weakness, vulnerability on defense that it did not used to have. So, you know, I think a lot of people have been using Gas on offense for a long time. Um, I think up towards the high end, a lot of folks preferred to keep it on defense because it's still a real power team, but it isn't it isn't oomphant the way it used to. And in general, it's been a tougher team in threes than in fives because, um, I mean, you can still just go up and bounty hunters a full gas 501st in fives. But uh, and that's that's wow. That's even easier done today now with the with the whole doubt cron versus the prod up thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So so I don't know, but the gas gas's time is at a close, and um, yeah, doubt was transformative. You took the words right out of my mouth there, Sasha. Like doubt was um, the single most defining thing about this season. So making sure that you have enough yourself is is a very fair point there. Um, for me, it's it's making sure that. You really got to just look at whatever you're you, you're planning to when you're when you're planning against your opponent. You're looking at what you think they're going to set, and you're lining up with the teams you think you need. Just ask yourself: How dependent are you on turn meter? How dependent are you on buffs to get this done? And if you can, if you can envision getting that done despite the doubt, is that going to be for banners that you're cool with? Um, and, and that's the type of thing I'll be thinking about. Now we'll we'll have new data crons and stuff. Uh, when we circle back, but yeah, it's, it's, I, I got nabbed a couple times wanting for either turn meter or buffs when I wasn't really thinking about it. So I gotta, I gotta mind that. Um, and, and yeah, just, uh, that flexibility. I can't tell you, Sasha, how much I loved seeing that your back wall had neither saw nor Tuscans on it because of course I had the plan for them being there. I had to plan for it. So the disruption of yeah. that and the fact that you were able to effectively use them both as one shots on offense, that's something I I got to think more about because I, I, it's only when I see the opponents that can do 57s and stuff, right? If I if I see somebody next season, it's like last season they were just rolling through 57 on DTMG, 56 on, on Saw. That is where I'm going to start thinking about making that pivot, which I historically don't. Like, if the Kron says this is going to be good on defense, I've stuck it on defense. And that shouldn't be one of my always never rules, is, is one of those things. All right. Uh, you know, it, 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 it's, it's liberating to come to that realization that, like, you can, you can move those things around. To be honest, that's how I came across um, using Malgus DRBSF so comfortably against DTMG mm -hmm. was... Just like you're saying, Tass, I kept looking at my opponent's histories. I'm like, well, they get an easy 57 on Malgus, easy 57 on Malgus, easy. There's got to be a higher calling for Malgus. Mm -hmm. And it's speaking that type of stuff out. Um, so, yeah, I, I, honestly, I'll, I'll be curious to see what you come up with because uh, I, I think you'll, you'll recognize those patterns and probably uh, have some, uh, some mischief to, to undertake there. I'm looking forward to it. Historically, I've enjoyed threes, and I'm sure I'll like it more next time with uh, with a new set involved because th this this was this was oppressive and it felt pretty stale here. About a week and a half into the three weeks that we're fighting here, um, it, it just in the sense that it's like, oh yeah, we're fighting a, a team, a board full of B teams again. Okay, fine, all right, all right, guys. Um, Time to turn to final notes, right? I think we're I think we're at that part of the show here. So what's what's uh, what's left for the people? What's the final note? Your thought as we transition into preparing for this next upcoming five season? Any notes on conquest you got? Let's hear what you have to say, Dagger. 
Well, we talked we talked about this a couple of times in the past, but seeing the death throws of gas and Zori on defense in threes where they are better than they are in fives is a little disheartening going into fives because it's like, what the fuck am I going to do with these teams that weren't, you know what I mean? It's like, they didn't get better, you know? <laughs> uh, so it, it's trying to scrape any knowledge that three V three may have given and uh, I won't uh, go off on a tangent here and rant about 3v3 being shitty, but, you know, it's about trying to grasp and, like, scrape any amount of value from the knowledge you've gleaned from 3v3. And, man, there just isn't a whole lot to grab onto outside of, like, negativity, essentially, for me, where it's like, what am I going to do when Zori, like, Zori beats gas, but so does Stapp, so it's like, no, the top end gas isn't gonna be on defense. So what do I do with my Zori then? Because like she's not gonna hold. Anyways, you know stuff like stuff like that. Just like really seeing gas and Zori specifically exposed in three v three is really disheartening me towards like a defensive plan in fives. No, I do hear that. That makes sense. Um, all right. Yep, it's a good note. TJ, how about you? Your last thought for the people? Yeah, I think this is the time of. Because now I, I think for the most part people have the data crimes they're going to need. Not many, not many teams left on defense. Uh, we're going into a whole different uh, offensive all game. I would just, I would honestly, if you can and you can do it this conquest, min max those data crimes you know you're going to put on defense and offense. Get them, get them statted right. Get their uh, level sixes or whatever it's going to be right. Get them, get them creme de la creme as much as you can. Uh, mods are great, but data crimes matter. So just get those in line this season because um, obviously we're rolling out to the next one. So this conquest, just just take that to heart. This is a time now to get them ready because you're going to have a surplus, uh, a leftover amount. Uh, so getting those deflections, those whatever you want to use, just get them all primed and ready to go. That's a good one. All right, Sasha, how about you? Last bit of goodness for the people. Uh yeah, I, I guess um, I don't know that I have really much more uh, to add on, on this one. I just think that uh, it's it, it'll be interesting to see if like people take some different approaches with these data crons to like start having some impact in the game that hasn't been felt yet in threes. Like for example, is there anything that Bodie Rook can do? Uh, mm -hmm. I do think that there's uh, an opportunity for, um, uh, gosh, what's his name? The uh, There's the other, I'm thinking of the Imperial Trooper guy, um, uh, Stark. I think Stark's Kron has some potential in fives. Mm -hmm. Like uh, just starting to explore stuff out there that um, I think can, can make a little bit of a difference that um, hasn't been touched on on three. So I think... I think there's more to come from, from set 13 than we've seen already, is my gut. Very good. All right. Uh, my final note would be just as you're as you're grinding through your conquest here this week, yes, make sure you have enough doubts and prod ups. Actually, you know, run run your check and think like, you know, oh, here just this last season, I'd say about, you know, sixty percent of my board was having teams that have doubts. So do you have enough? for all of your attacks. Make sure you've got that. And also, don't be a dum-dum like me. Um, make sure that you have the more uncommon level threes and sixes that are not optimal for, for most situations, but have like a couple three of them. I'm talking about your, uh, the level six, like that's the um, prod up when enemies lose turn meter one. There's a couple empire teams for which that's useful. Uh, there's a, a health recovery level three for dark and light side that will have occasionally good use just don't don't do what i do because you know like when you're fishing for doubts and fishing for product level threes every single data crime you're taking a three it's like oh it didn't go it didn't go to prod up uh okay well we're re-rolling it and it's like okay well that's fine it's mostly good but you you are going to have the occasional fight that's uh that you, you're really going to wish you had a couple of those otter threes and sixes that you weren't deliberately, uh, deliberately targeting. So this is your last chance um, for this Datacron set, because as of this recording, this uh, today started the third conquest for Darth Bane. Um, and this is uh, the last hurrah, I believe, right? For farming set 13, guys, is that right? Last hurrah? Correct. 
So, yep, get it while the That's getting's it. good. That's why. That's why it's so important. Get it while the getting's good. Okay, guys. Uh, well, you know, as always, thank you, Dagger TJ Sashish. Appreciate you guys making the time for our show. Let me go ahead and get started. Uh, just, you know, thanking the the patrons and get ready to wrap up and roll out. So, yeah, uh, for all of our general audience on YouTube, this video will be live on Friday. Uh, let me pull up the date here. That will be 23rd of February. For all of our patrons here, uh, this will be available tomorrow morning, the 20th. Um, and, yeah, you know, really appreciate all the great feedback and support we've been getting. Uh, love you guys' notes and what you want to see in the show. Got some good plans coming forward. We had a lot of feedback about what you guys want to see here in the upcoming video talking about the next Fivers 5 season. So that video will be coming out next week. Uh, keep your eyes peeled for that as well. All right. Uh, and if you like what we're doing here and you want to support us, check out patreon.com forward slash Tassinix. There is something for the upwardly mobile GAC player there. Uh, depends on what your needs are to get what you're really looking for. But uh, we do have... You know, just the basic tier that gets you into the community, gets you that early access to the shows, and then there's other tiers that give you access to the premier, you know, GAC scouting bots, all under one bundled program. Save a little money, support your boy, everybody gets something, yeah? Uh, gotta thank the patrons themselves who make all of this possible. Going from bottom up here, VIP Access, White Wolf, Sam Vimes, Jobin4527, Sweens14, Stark Strategy Gamer, Sir Boss, Lego Calrissian2187, Deadpool Cal28, Johnny B. Ottawa, Darth QPPMG, Ray's Malvis, JJ's Productions Twitch, and Quig. Thank you guys so much for your support. At VIP Access Plus, uh, Trevor Boy Gaming and Striker, thank you guys, taking advantage of that Omega Bot bundle deal. I, th I know you guys love uh, the intel you get out of that. And, of course, the one and only Nomad's Reaper occupying the top of the chart at Jester's Club Elite. You know, just absolutely crushed my last um, record for a hype train this season. A level 17. I don't know if you were around for that one, Sasha, but it was uh, one for the record. It was. It was phenomenal. Oh, it was. It was incredible. So really appreciate the love, dude. It's going to make a big impact here because uh, you, you as, as fate would have it, the Twitch payout was just like the day before. But, I, you know, you're you're setting me up. I'm going to see what I can do about Stap uh, and, and see how well I can be prepared for the upcoming Gungans. And, oh, my God, I'm so looking forward to having Boss Nass. My body is ready for Boss Nass. All right, and uh, special thanks, guys. Uh, Yoda Force, one of my original supporters from back in the day. He's long since quit the game, but we remember him fondly on the other side. Wish you well. To Mrs. T, my wife, thank you so much for all of your back-end support and patience as I try to be halfway decent at a phone video game. To Dagger, TJ, and Sashisha, you know, once more, again, you know, really appreciate you guys. We, we, this, uh, this show would not be anywhere near as interesting if these fine folks had to hear me jaw jack by myself. So we have uh, a great thing. I enjoy what we're doing here, and it just couldn't be done without you guys. Really appreciate it. All right. Uh, that about wraps it up here for me, so I'm going to get back into doing conquest and stuff. But uh, until next time, it's been real. It's been awesome. It's been real awesome. Take care.